Hi guys, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, my newest favorite full-size SUV is Infiniti QX80. I've already done a full car review on this one. So if you haven't looked at it, watch it. And in that video, I explain to you why this is one of the best full-size body-on-frame SUVs. Even when compared to the legendary Lexus LX600 or the new LX700, I do like this one better. Uh, well, actually, I shouldn't say that because I haven't driven the LX700 but I have driven the LX600 and I like this one better than that. But because I've already done a full review on it, what I want to focus today is to do my full engineer's audit on this vehicle and measure everything and tell you how this stands in terms of overall quality. So as usual, let me start off with uh, measuring the gaps and looking at the alignment. This is built in Kyushu plant uh, in Infinity, which is southern tip of Japan. It's actually a really interesting factory that I plan to visit soon. But for now, let me show you the gaps here, which is 2.8 millimeter here, 2.9, the same on both sides, which is fantastic because very few cars in the world can do less than three millimeter. Uh, this is a bit wider at 3.5, but 3.3 and 3.3. Millimeters of gaps are fantastic. You can tell all the creases line up perfectly all the way through. And then uh, also importantly, the paint quality has very little orange peel, so the paint quality looks fantastic. And the actual clear coat, the depth of paint looks really good as well. So both alignment and paint job looks really good. I think uh, the paint thickness is something that I need to also figure out. So let's take a quick look at that. If I measure the hood, it shows 130 microns, roughly 129. The front fender, it's a bit thinner at 96. And then the front door is 102. And the rear door is about 98. So give or take is about the same as uh, many other brands, including Toyota and Lexus. Uh, usually I expect the thickness to be between 100 to 150 microns. I was hoping that you'll be closer to 140 or 150, but it's not. But the newer painting technology allows the paint to be thinner. So that's probably why we're seeing kind of reduced numbers recently in some of the newer models. But regardless, the paint quality looks really good. The gaps are fantastic. Alignment is really good as well uh, because this is one of the best plants that Nissan slash Infiniti have in Japan. So the quality is fantastic, including some of the parts from suppliers. So all the plastic components, you can tell the quality of this um, trim right here is perfect. I don't see any kind of a, a defect. Uh, this is a kind of what they call the bamboo looking front grille. Looks really good as well. And then the plastic bumpers here matches well with the front fender with no gap as well. So panel alignment, paint quality looks, looks really good. And I'm going to continue to do some other measurements, uh, both in terms of inside as well as uh, starting the engine and measuring the uh, decibel as well. So let me do that right now. Okay, so I'm inside the QX80. And as I mentioned in my previous video about the QX80, gorgeous interior, beautifully engineered and designed. Lots of piano black though, but in terms of the overall design, the texture, the material, and the fit and finish, I mean, it's just fantastic. It's as good as the best ones I've seen from Lexus, for example, and better than many other brands costing two or three times more. But I'm gonna do a bunch of tests on this vehicle to just show you how quiet and how well made it is. Starting with the uh, actual decibels, I'm going to measure the noise inside the cabin with the engine running. I'm not going to measure the noise when the vehicle is actually driving on the road because it's hard to really measure that properly since the road condition and type of road you're driving on will impact the noise level. So I'm only going to do it with the idle. So let's, let me show you. I'm going to keep quiet now and see what the decibel looks like. Okay, so it's pretty well come down to about 43 decibel, which is ridiculously quiet. Most cars are kind of 50, 55, even luxury cars are usually above 50 decibels. So to be able to hit 43 and maybe even less than that, if I just let, let it settle down a bit more, it's a fantastic. So really, really quiet interior. I can tell you right now, even when I'm driving, it's extremely quiet because the glasses and so forth are a little bit thicker than normal. I'll measure the glasses as well and tell you what's going on. But let me do some other measurements, see if I can figure out how good the interior fit and finish is. And then I'll measure the window and then we can come to some conclusion as to how well built this QX80 is. So let me now measure the thickness of the front and the rear side glass because that will give you some indication as to why this vehicle is so quiet in terms of interior noise. So I've measured a couple of times now. It's pretty well dead on at five millimeter. 
4.98 millimeter and the reason why this is a bit thicker than normal glass which is about four millimeter is because this is acoustic glass you can tell by looking at it it's, it has a sandwich layer so the outer glass and there's something in between here laminated sheet basically and these are called uh, acoustic glass because it's a thicker and therefore more of a noise reduction than normal glass uh, you'll know what I mean when I measure the rear one because it's going to be thinner than the front uh, side windows. Okay, so now this is the rear side windows and I'm again measured a couple places, both sides, and comes up pretty well dead on at 4 millimeters, 4.01 millimeter to be exact. So that's pretty well standard. Usually uh, side windows are about 4 millimeters, but this one has the acoustic glass, so it's 5 millimeter front, 4 millimeter in the rear. And they don't put the acoustic glass in the side window for the rear just because it's a cost saving thing. Uh, some of the more premium vehicles may have a five millimeter acoustic glass all the way around, sometime even here and also at the back. That's pretty rare though. So uh, this is also a good measure of quality in terms of what they're willing to do to reduce the noise as much as possible in the cabin uh, because having these acoustic glass definitely help. Now let me show you some other stuff inside the cabin. Okay so I've hopped back into the vehicle and what I want to show you is uh, sort of the extra care and the time they spent to design something quite extraordinary because most car companies wouldn't do this. So for example these are layered wood and metal um, kind of veneer and these are very expensive to make because you've got to layer a piece of wood over these aluminum trims and it's not easy to create this. Uh, you can see that also on the side. And then uh, Infinity actually put stitching all over the card. Here, 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 even down here, here as well. All the way through and all the stitching actually lines up. It's not um, misaligned in any way. It's even stitching down here, 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 here. And this is kind of attention to details that you get when you pay like $8,000 extra on a Porsche models where you can have stitching all over the place including the side door, the dash and also on the center console. But most luxury vehicles and luxury SUVs don't bother doing this amount of stitching anymore just because it's so expensive. And then this Infinity also has kind of quilting design on the seat which makes it more expensive as well. So again, stitching here, stitching here. So I have to commend Infinity for spending this amount of time designing an interior that is not only functional, but also just beautiful because of all this extra work they did. You get a full Alcantara on the A pillar here as well, but also up on the ceiling. Uh, this is a high quality Alcantara. Uh, more and more manufacturers are using the cheaper kind, but this one I can tell by just rubbing my hand against it. This is a more expensive Alcantara. Uh, and you can see it's wrapped all the way around as well. So uh, even the actual sun visors of Alcantara. So attention to detail is, you know what, outstanding, better than the Lexus LX in some way. And, you know, rivaling uh, what you see in a $250,000 Range Rover, yet this car is half the price. Um, there are many other things that uh, I'm impressed with, including the stereo system and the full digital instrumentation and just the overall layout as well. But I will admit I'm really tired of having all this piano black in different uh, vehicles, including this one. I just don't understand why car companies have really gone crazy with uh, piano black. They just scratch so easily. Even though the newer models have a kind of anti-scratching property on it, it's still not the best material. Why didn't they just put these aluminum trims or the wood trims over here or extend the leather over here? That would have been uh, much better. Uh, anyhow, I do love the interior and in terms of fit and finish, the overall quality, how the parts fit and how everything seems to come together. Uh, it's a solid A, A+. I didn't hear any squeaks or rattles while driving and this thing honestly is built like a tank. Now let me give you some of my final comments about this vehicle. So as you can tell, I'm super impressed with the overall quality of this Infiniti QX80 in terms of exterior, the panel fit, the paint job, the interior, all the stitching, all the parts, how they've come together, uh, even the thick acoustic glass in the front. This thing is built like a tank, it's built in Japan, in southern Kyushu plant by Infiniti. And honestly, to me, it looks as well built as some of the best from Lexus. Now, we won't know until maybe a few years down the road whether the reliability will be as good as Lexus, but I expect it to be pretty good because the previous Infiniti QX80s were 
actually quite well built. Maybe not quite to the standard of Lexus LX 600 and now the 700 series, but for the price, well, the thing is actually quite amazing, both in terms of manufacturing quality, but also just the overall driving feel and experience I have had it so far. Now, again, if you haven't watched my full review on this one and go and watch that, please, I'll put a link in the description below. But for this video, I kind of just wanted to focus on the quality aspect, do a full audit, and kind of go through everything piece by piece to show you how well built this thing is and what I really think of this new QX80 because it is all new for this year. Anyhow, if you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up, make some comments, and, and if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.